Cliff? We need that billboard. That big billboard. Right. That's fine. Everybody hold your pictures up high so everybody can get a good look. Hmm? What? Yeah. Uh, I'm out. Yeah. Just hold one with them. Okay. Thank you all for coming to the celebration of life that is John, uh, Frank Tyson's life. Today we're going to hear from family. Uh, my name, as you know, is Bobby DiCello. I'm going to explain who's going to be talking today. Uh, we have, we have, uh, can you, is this better? Yeah. I'll do it this way. I'm attorney Bobby DiCello, uh, attorney for the Tyson family, and I want to first introduce my uh, co-lead in this case, who we are so grateful to have joining the team, uh, the Tyson family, and I welcome Ben Crump, who will be speaking. I'll be first. Ben will be speaking right after me, and then the family will be speaking. We have, uh, for those who need to take down names, let me give you the names of the order of those who will be speaking. Uh, brother, the youngest brother, John Tyson, his cousin, Frank's cousin, Ronald Simmons, uh, Frank's younger cousin, Angela Rembert, spelled R-E-M-B-E-R-T, Frank's niece, Jasmine Tyson. And certainly, last but definitely not least, Sabrina Jones, Frank's fiance. I need this right here. The first thing we need to say is that when a man tells you he can't breathe, you are never allowed to say, Shut the F up. Amen. You cannot. Never. That's why we're here. It appears that the city of Canton keeps law enforcement officers in its ranks that do not understand this. This simple act of human dignity that could have been offered to Frank was denied on the day he died. Just the, just the simple dignity of being helped. Yeah. Yes. Just some basic help. Yes. Amen. The other thing that's super important about this case is that I represent, and Mr. Crump is aware of this, two other deceased people in this city. Zachary Fornash, James Williams, and now this man, Frank Tyson. Yes. And Mr. Crump and I are committed and he will be explaining the experience of African Americans, but we are committed to getting justice for Frank. Right. Justice for Frank Tyson. Justice, justice, justice for Frank Tyson. Tyson. Yes. It is my extreme pleasure to have Mr. Crump with us because he has a, a, a notable list of clients that I would like to just highlight, and it's what brings us here today. You all know George Floyd. I am shocked to tell you that this is George Floyd 2.0. My Lord. This is George Floyd revisited. Ben and I had a conversation about that. We talk as lawyers who handle these cases. We said, sometimes it feels too much, too hard to care this much. And to see what happened to Frank after this man worked with George Floyd's family. The whole world knew that case. And it's our job to make sure the whole world knows Frank's case. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to just briefly comment that Frank is not as advertised in the media. He was a man that dealt with the constant threat of law enforcement and the constant dread of a wrongful conviction. And Mr. Crump will be addressing those issues for you today. His 
dying day was met with the expiration of not just the air in his lungs, but the hope that he would someday be exonerated for what happened to him. And Mr. Crump will be addressing that as well. That was his hope. But I guide you to one concept, and then I will give the microphone over to Mr. Crump. Every day, we in Northeast Ohio, and I am one of you, I went to Lake Catholic. I was raised in Mentor. I worked my first job at a steel mill at 71st and Central, Cleveland Track and Material, when I was 16 to help pay for school. I love the Browns. <laughs> love my town. I love each and every one of you. But there's a sickness in our town. When you say the quiet part of hate out loud, shut the F up. When you say the quiet part out loud, everyone needs to pay attention. George Floyd died and the officers remained in silence. These officers died, killed Frank and did so saying the quiet part out loud. Yes. They no. told him mm -hmm. to shut the F up and die. Yeah. Wow. My Lord. Yes. My Lord. <laughs> my Lord. It is my mission as a member of this Northeast Ohio community mm -hmm. to work with Mr. Crump and to work with each and every one of you who I am asking. I'm looking into the eyes of each one of you here, and there's a group here to be active. No more apathy. Equality, said Dr. King, meant something, and it needs to mean something today, including in the way in which law enforcement treats everyone. That's for everyone. Equality is the missing piece. And we need to push equality together. Amen. And to end this from a phrase that a bishop taught me that I have always remembered, this is not about skin, this is about kin. Right. That's right. Yeah. Now, y'all, please give another round of applause to Bobby DiCello, who has been fighting on the front line all over America, but especially here in Ohio. Uh, him and his law firm, DiCello Levitt, Attorney Ken Abarno, we have fought for marginalized people, marginalized minorities, minority marginalized black people who didn't have a voice. They didn't think it robbery to help give them a voice. So thank you uh, more than you know, Bobby DiCello. Yes, Love you, brother. <laughs> Eric Gardner said, I can't breathe. George Floyd said, I can't breathe. Frank Tyson said, I can't breathe. How many more black men in America has to tell police officers I can't breathe before police actually believe these black men fighting for their last breaths on this earth. I mean, y'all, the, the reason we have to get justice for Frank Tyson is because it's been far too many black men and black women saying, I can't breathe. This can happen to your daughter. It can happen to your son. That's why we have to get justice for Frank Tyson. That's right. Justice for Frank, Frank. Tyson. Y'all understand that? I, before I, I, I really break down this tragedy and really break down this case, I, I want you all to repeat out to me, especially some of you who really know this more than other Americans. It can happen to my daughter. It can happen to my son. That's why we got to get justice for Frank Tyson. It can happen to my daughter. It can happen to my daughter. 
It can happen to my son. That's why we got to get justice for Frank Tyson. Y'all stand to your feet if you really understand it can happen to your child. It can happen to my daughter. It can happen to my son. That's why we got to get justice for Frank Tyson. Eric Gardner said, I can't breathe. And the officers said, Shut, you know, they put him on the ground and told him to quit struggling. George Floyd said, I can't breathe, Bobby. Yes, sir. And they said, You're talking. You can breathe. Frank Tyson said, I can't breathe. And they said, you're fine. Shut the F up. And so you would think, after Eric Gardner, the police officers would be more considerate when a person says, I can't breathe. But then you come four years ago to George Floyd. It's hard to believe it'll be four years next month. May 25th, but George Floyd says, I can't breathe, and then they respond where you're talking. No consideration for him. And then after George Floyd, every police officer in America should have consideration for when a person who is handcuffed detained in your custody says I can't breathe everybody in America knew from watching that trial that when they say you can't breathe you get them off their stomachs you seal them up on their side so they can breathe so they can simply breathe they can extend life everybody should have known that now. So what those officers were thinking had to be something that we can't relate to. Anybody that saw that George Floyd video cannot relate to you ignoring a person saying, I can't breathe. You cannot, you cannot understand it. How many more teachable moments, America, at the cost of black people's lives do we have to give you before you believe us when we say, I can't breathe? And then certainly, Attorney DiCello, to John, his brother, Marcus, his brother, Darren, his brother, Sabrina, his soulmate. I mean, after George Floyd, if any police officer in America knew that it was excessive force to put your knee on a person's neck who is detained, handcuffed and face down. I don't know where you were trained at. That should be police training 101 now in America. Don't put your knee on my neck. I mean, it's simple. We have that picture, Bobby. I mean, we got the picture of his hands behind his back, and the officer got his knee on his neck. That's why Bobby said, and, and the family believes it's George Floyd 2.0. You got him saying, I can't breathe. You got a knee on his neck. And then you got the just lack of humanity. The inhumanity, Joseph, the complete inhumanity. I mean, they are joking. They 
they are joking. I never thought I was going to get on a bar fight. <laughs> While this man is laying on the ground dying, they are joking. And, and we'll share this picture with the media, but it's just a, a still from the video that shows Frank face down, and there's a light from the body camera or what have you that shows his knee is right there on Frank's neck. I mean, at the George floor, really? A knee on the neck of a person who is restrained. You got him. He ain't going nowhere. Mr. Crump, can I just say one thing? Please. This is the policy of use of force policy 300 for the city of Canton. Uh, it. it doesn't mean anything. They're pretty words. <laughs> and pretty words don't make good deeds. Pretty words don't matter. Tell them it's time to change. Your policy and the way you're training your officers. And you all, they're going to try to convince you that Frank isn't worthy of your consideration. Because after they assassinate our person, they try to assassinate our character. They did it with Trayvon Martin. They did it with Michael Brown and Ferguson. They did it with Eric Gardner. They did it with Breonna Taylor. They did it with Tamir Rice. They did it with Jalen Walker. They did it with James Williams. They did it with Andre Hill. They did it with George Floyd. They did it with Daryl Ross. I mean, how many, how many, how many more black people do they kill and then try to assassinate their character? This is the part of their playbook. This is part of their MO. So we, we need to make the record straight for Frank Tyson. Now, just like everybody saw the George Floyd video, we're enhancing the Frank Tyson video. We're enhancing the audio on the video. We want to make sure everybody can hear Frank saying, I can't breathe those seven times and the responses from the officers when he said, I can't breathe. We want you all to hear when they check this post and then how the mood changed and how they still didn't do anything, and that's on the video. But that doesn't tell the whole story. Frank came in there to that establishment, and Frank was saying, call the sheriff. You all watched the video, right? He kept saying, call the sheriff. And that's important. That's very important. And, and understand this, Attorney Obano, there was, there was no commotion. There was no, no. chaos no. until the Canton police oh, officers man. got in that establishment. Oh, That's very important to note. Big facts. Frank said, get the sheriff. Call the sheriff. He kept saying that. He was mortally afraid of the Canton Police Department because of not just the history of the Canton Police Department, but his personal history with the Canton Police Department. You see, Sabrina and his family knows Frank was wrongfully convicted and imprisoned for 24 years, and he always pleaded his innocence every day 
I did not do this. It is the tale of many black people, especially black men in America. I'm on the Innocence Project board. I know there are at least 100,000 black men in prison today who are completely innocent. Their only crime, they were at the wrong place and had the wrong skin color. Frank Tyson was robbed of his liberty for 24 years because of a racist, uncompassionate criminal justice system. Frank had been free less than two weeks before he was robbed of his life from a racist criminal justice system. And I don't know, John Tyson, what is worse, the wrongful conviction or the wrongful death. I mean, Attorney DeCello and I and Cliff Jones and Attorney Fauche, Attorney Bono, we went through the transcript we went through the transcript of him fighting for his innocence, fighting to clear his name, fighting to be exonerated. Sabrina is going to tell you when you hear from her, to his last day on this earth, he was talking about clearing his name. I mean, you have a transcript that was filed in federal court where they had evidence of the two young people that uh, they say he kidnapped, they recanted. They said the prosecutors told them to lie. This is in the transcript. This is in the transcript. Then, then the state trooper who was the main person to identify him they show evidence based on the video recorded from the vehicle that he could not have possibly identified Frank. They said he was four miles away. But yet, they sliced the videos in court during the criminal trial. As Frank told his family and Sabrina, right, John, to frame him. And so he said, no, when you look at these two videos apart from each other, from the police state high patrol vehicles, you see a different story. And he pointed that out in his uh, quest, his motion to be exonerated and released from prison. And the courts talk, and you can read this transcript, they talk about actual innocence is not enough because you were late in filing it. Can you imagine that? Actual innocence doesn't matter. We, we don't care about the merits because black men, you couldn't afford good legal counsel. You couldn't afford good representation at the time to file the motions on time. We just going to look away from the actual innocence, the fact that the people who were the main people who you used to convict this man said, I was being coerced. Yeah. I was being threatened. I was under duress. I was forced to lie. We just going to overlook all of that. That doesn't matter. Yeah, when you think about how his liberty had been stolen from him for 24 years and he was put in a cage by the Canton Police Department, yes. does everybody understand why the first thing Frank Tyson was saying in that establishment is call the sheriff, do not call the Canton Police. He was mortified because he knew they had already framed him before. He had been in prison for 24 years. He had only been out for 13 days. What did he think 
that Cam Police Department was going to do to him this time. That's why he was calling for the sheriff. And I tell you, Bobby DiCello, you know, Frank's worst fear, I suspect, was he feared that they were going to frame him again and put him back in prison. But they did worse than that. They didn't just steal his liberty this time. They stole his life. There you go. That's it, Frank Frank it can happen to your daughter. It can happen to your son. That's why we have to get justice for Frank Tyson. Y'all join me. It can happen to my daughter. It can happen to my son. That's why I'm fighting for justice for Frank Tyson. It can happen to my daughter. It can happen to my son. That's why I'm fighting for justice for Frank Tyson. It can happen to my daughter. It can happen to my son. That's why I'm fighting for justice for Frank Tyson. It can happen to my daughter. It can happen to my son. That's why I'm fighting for justice for Frank Tyson. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to hear from John Tyson, the youngest brother of the family and Frank's little brother. Yes, my name is uh, John Tyson. Frank Tyson was my older brother. Um, just on behalf of the Tyson family, through our mourning, we just want justice answers and accountability. We just want our due process. Justice for Frank Tyson. I want to recognize Darren Tyson. Darren, put your hand up, please. This is yeah. Darren. This is the oldest brother. Right here. Yeah. And I want to recognize Marcus. Marcus Tyson. Mel excuse me, Melvin Tyson. Melvin. Melvin. Middle brother. We're next going to hear from Frank, Frank's cousin, Ronald Simmons. Ronald, make a plan. Good morning, everyone. I just want to give thanks to God for being here today because, you know, without him, we don't survive. But it's an evil thing to wake up every day and be in a position where you look back and you say, this right here is the same thing all over again. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Here's a man that come from a great family. My uncle worked hard to make sure his kids had the best. They went to the best schools. They didn't go to the rats. They weren't. My right. aunt stayed home. Right. Stayed right. home and took care of her sons. And he worked two jobs. He trained them to work. Them boys worked. And I had the opportunity to be there around them. It was a joy to go to a place where my uncle built a brand new home. Yeah, he did. And he was paying back then more money than what you could ever imagine. And he raised seven boys. He never denied them anything. Never, Amen. never, never. denied them. And to see this here, where we've got this pick and nicking about how he was raised, yeah. you will not disgrace my family. Oh, right. Tell him, Ron. Tell him, Ron. And I'm in a position at this point to stand here and be proud, even though he did 24 years. Wrong for he me. did 24 years. But what did he do prior? He was trained yeah. to work. When he got out, his goal was to get back out and be able to survive and be like his dad. Them boys were workers. Ask he on. didn't come out with a. I wish I could show you the picture. The first picture I got in my phone of him, he's carrying a, a, a file cabinet in his hand of yep. everything he had done through the course of being locked up for yeah. 24 years. Yeah. He hit a pole, and you got to see the overall, and you'll understand. This was only the way things were not 
supposed to be. He got actually murdered in the hands of the police officers. Negligence that they have no knowledge of what to do. They never talked to him. They never did any of these things. You know what? You know what killed him? Being black. Yes, yeah. Being black. Yes, you know the problem with it is? You got all these Christian Caucasians, whoever. I'm just talking in general. Because at the end of the day, we're talking about one thing. And if them officers would have been trained prior that one thing in life is you will have love in your heart because a man will not, will not help another man. They seen him, and I'm not talking about the camp police officers. I'm talking about the overall bar. No one had enough love in their heart to help that man. They watched him. Why? Because he was black. I got a problem with this. So I just thank God for all of you being here today and you know, we've hired nothing but the best. I, I stand between them. They've done a great job. They've uh, come in. They've taken care of business. And we will not lose. Justice for Frank Tyson. Justice for Frank Tyson. Justice for Frank Tyson. Thank you, Ronald. Next, we're, we're going to hear from Angela Rembert, Frank's younger cousin. Good morning. My name is Angela Rembert. Frank was my older cousin. Thank you. Can you hear me now? From James Baldwin, 1972. There you go. My asked, Take your turn. You got this. You got this. I just asked for time and just give me a little grace. Take your turn. If one really wishes to know how justice is administered in a country, one does not question the policemen, the lawyers, the judges, or the protected members of the middle class. One goes to the unprotected, those precisely who need the law's protection most, and listens to their testimony. It's unfortunate that Frank was not protected and you will not have an opportunity to hear his testimony. No. I remember it was just days after him coming home, I kept calling my mom. When is Frank coming? When is Frank coming? When is Frank coming? He said he was gonna be at my mom's house at about 3.15. I had some things to do with my daughter, didn't get there till later and I said, you know what? I'm gonna call my mom again to see if Frank has arrived. I can hear him in the background. <laughs> if anyone knows anything about Frank, his <laughs> laugh was yeah. contagious. Mm -hmm. He greeted me with a hug like no hug I've ever had. Oh. It was so tight, so tight. And we talked about, you know, Sabrina was there as well. And he shared with me that next day he was going up to Cleveland to speak with an attorney regarding the 24 years that he served unjustly. Truth. Truth. Wow. Just understand, understand that we love Frank yes. and we will be here. And he was unprotected. And he was unprotected. unprotected. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sabrina. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Angela. He was unprotected. My Lord. Next, we're going to hear from Frank's niece, Jasmine Tyson. Just say what's on your heart, baby. Good morning. Good morning. try to talk as much because um, all I can just remember talking to him remember wanting to visit with him when he came home because that's all we talked about is seeing him 
but all I just have is um the memories of grandma and my uncles tell me everything about him and how he is and I want everybody to know stop painting that picture of his crimes because that's not him no that is not him he did not do what you guys are painting him as he is a wonderful person from all the memories I know of everybody telling me. Um, I just know my uncle is going to be missed. I laugh with him on the telephones when I call Sabrina when he was got home. And I just know in my heart I love him. I know his brothers are going to miss him. And I can just still remember the laughter and everything from him. But watching that video is heartbreaking. It's okay, Chad. We got you, baby. But everybody, <laughs> justice is for him. Justice for Frank Tyson. Justice for Frank Tyson. Justice for Frank Tyson. Yeah, you know, it, it is it is so difficult for this family when you think about how hard they have fought for 24 years to try to get Frank out of prison because they all believed he was wrongfully convicted. And then when he get out of prison, to still have him being stereotyped by a racist system just because they could never see past his skin color. What do I mean? Frank talked about how the police beat him up in the first place to get the confession out of him. And then you had, at the very end, the police beating him. Mm -hmm. I mean, and Fair then enough. not offering him any humanity. Right. I mean, think about, y'all, put a stop clock on and just sit in a room for eight minutes by yourself and see how much time really passed while that man was on the ground moaning and they didn't do anything to help him. I mean, it, it does remind you of George Floyd, those nine minutes and 29 seconds. That's a lot of time for you to see a human being struggling for life. And as a fellow human being, you do nothing. You do nothing. And the fact, Attorney DiCello, I, I, yes, sir. I was listening to Jasmine and she yes. was shaking up there and I just kept thinking, she said, don't try to paint them with those accusations. Their family know best. That's right. My grandmother used to always say when we were little children, what's worse than a lie? Yeah. To tell the truth and have nobody believe you. <laughs> that is Frank Tyson's story. Yeah. Stole 24 years of his life, Bobby. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Okay, and finally, we have Sabrina Jones, Frank's fiance. And Bob, I think we should tell him that Sabrina stuck by, was with him before he went to prison, and stuck oh, by him oh, all 24 years. Kept fighting for her man. Kept fighting for the truth. Kept fighting for freedom. Kept fighting for her soulmate. Her black team, her love, Sabrina Johnson. Jones. Exactly, black woman love. This is hard. When Frank got sentenced 24 years, he started working on his case. He didn't stop until the end, until he got out. He still worked on his case. He was determined for his innocence. We love you, Sabrina. He didn't get a chance to um, 
we did go to Cleveland to talk to the lawyer, but the lawyer wasn't there to take his case. He did send the papers up to the Stark County. They got it. They know. <laughs> they they do know. They know they know what they did. Yeah, yeah they know what they did. Yeah, they did. Do it every day in America. Every day. He had a future, he had a plan, he was ready. He wasn't ready to die though. No. no. He was ready to go to work. Yeah. But the cops, the two cops, they just ended his life. They didn't give him a chance. Not at all. I can't do this. Justice for Frank Tyson. 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 Say his name. Frank Tyson. Say his name. Frank Tyson. Say his name. Frank Tyson. You did real good by Frank. Good job. As uh, Sabrina was finishing her comments, John came up to me and said he had one more thing to tell everybody. So John, the youngest brother. So not only was he a uh, sentence of 24 years, he was also uh, placed on three years probation, supervised probation. So I mean, he was fighting for that too. So I mean, 24 plus three, that's 27. That's more than his, half his age. Never heard nobody. So when, Yes. So yeah. when is enough enough? There you go, John. Well, yeah, John. And, and that's a great point to yeah. make. Frank was never accused of a violent crime. Yeah. They, they said that the kidnapping, and read the transcript. You don't have to take a, attorney Bancroft or attorney DiCello word for it. It's in the United States District Court, North, Northern District, Ohio, Eastern Division. Frank Eugene Tyson versus Benny Kelly Warden. And that's in the transcript. It's in documented in the records. The Frank Tyson story. The fact that they ask your innocence don't matter. He didn't file in time. It didn't matter that he had affidavits for the two main witnesses that they said, who they said were kidnapped, said we were forced to lie wow. by the prosecutor. Wow. It happens every day in America. Say his name. Frank Frank Tyson. Tyson. Say his name. Frank Frank Tyson. Tyson. Say his name. Frank Frank Tyson. Tyson. No justice. No, no peace. peace. No justice. No, no peace. peace. No justice. No, no peace. peace. When the average person hears the word kidnap, you think you kidnap somebody, tie them up, throw them in the trunk. In the eyes of the law, kidnapping is just make someone do something against their will. And by saying against the will, you can tell them to shut up, get out the way, push them. And that could be a kidnapping charge. And there's, a, you know, there's people out here with sexual harassment charges or whatever. I mean, did they really do what it said? But just a charge itself put it in the person's mind that are the severity of a crime. Yeah. But you actually have to say, look at the transcripts. What is the charge under? Yeah. Look at the transcript. Look at the video. Don't need to say no more. Just look at the video. Don't need to say no more. Just look at the video. Don't need to say no more. Just look at the video. Don't need to say no more. Just look at the video. We got to make everybody in America watch the Frank Tyson video. Okay, uh, just a word of uh, courtesy and advice. Uh, the family will not be taking questions. So please, members of the community, give them their space. This has been very difficult for them. You can direct all questions. What's, what's up? Okay, go ahead, read that out loud. I can't see Okay, uh, if, if, <laughs> hey, thank you, Kay. If we could have the pastor of this cathedral
come forward, Reverend McCants, as well as the uh, president of the NAACP and the Urban League, please come forward. This is your community, and the rest of America is going to fight, but they can't out fight you out who's right here on Ground Zero. Reverend McCants, thank you for letting us be in your great thank cathedral you, today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It could be our daughter, or it could be our son. We opened our doors and glad to do so. We're here to pray for this family. We're here to pray for their strength on their journey. I ask you to bow your heads with me. God, we come today asking for a special blessing upon each and every member in this family. Touch them. Yes, Lord. Touch where only you can touch. Yes, Lord. Begin to dry their eyes. Let them know the tears that they shed is the bitter bread that they need to eat to begin their healing. Yes, Lord. Yes. In quiet hours when no one's around, yes, Lord. dispatch gar guardian angels over each and every one of them. Yes, Strengthen them. Let them know that they're not alone. Yes, Be with them. Yes, Lord. Today and tomorrow, and the months ahead on their journey. Allow them to lean on each other so if one should fall, the other will be there to lift them up. Now be with their leadership, the team that's around them. Allow them to be strong. Yes, Lord. When persecution comes. Yes, Lord. When the bills get high and, the, and money is low, get, allow them to keep on going. Yes, Lord. To stand tall. Yes, Lord. When the lies come, when the threats come. Yes, Lord. Allow them to keep on going to stand for justice. Yes, Lord. And let justice roll down like a mighty water. Yes, Lord. Yes. Now let this community stand up. Yes, Lord. Let justice take off her blindfolds and open up her eyes and yes, see. Lord. And let us stand up as a community yes, Lord. and make rights correct. Yes, Lord. Let's right all wrongs. Yes, Lord. Let's paint a new picture for justice. Yes, Lord. Now bless us on this day. Strengthen us. This we pray. Amen. 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 Thank, you. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, sir. And, and as we have the next speaker, I, I do want to thank all the local activists and the people here in Canton. There's going to be a lot of people from around America who say injustice for Frank Tyson, but it all started with you all. And we can never thank the activists in the street enough. Thank you. We can never say thank you enough. It's about fighting in the court of law and the court a public opinion, and you all do that better than ever. Bobby DeCello, a great lawyer, you're going to fight in the court of law. He's going to do great things, but it won't be half the things that we can achieve with you all as our co counsels fighting in the streets in Canton, in Cleveland, and all over America for Frank Tyson. No peace. No peace. No peace. We have uh, Pastor Arrington who would like to say a few words. Thank you so much. Wonderful privilege to be here. And what I want to say is we've been here before. And I don't want to think that we'll be here again. But my mind says we will. And one of the reasons I think that this is so difficult is because we stand on the precipice of a new era. And that era is a new level of freedom. Yes, sir. And any time a mother is approaching giving birth, there are some significant labor pains. And what we're experiencing right now are those labor pains before the birth of a new era and a new level of freedom. All right. And so my word today is that we be diligent, cross all the T's, dot all the I's, but keep our eyes on the Lord because this is a movement 
of faith. Amen. And our faith says that, first of all, we are the Lord's people. And the Lord is on our side. And when the Lord is on your side, he's more for you than the whole world against you. We just look around and we see the line of demarcation even in here today. But we have to be diligent in going forward. We have to go forward in faith, knowing that God has granted it in grace. Thank you. Amen. We also have Thomas West from the NAACP. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. To, uh, from the Greater Stark County Urban League, Thomas West. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you all. First of all, give an honor to God and to the family of Frank Tyson. You know, I don't know about you, but coming here today and hearing the family, I didn't know Mr. Tyson personally. Never had the opportunity to meet him until I seen the video. I knew his family members, I met his family members, I know they're good people. But I will tell you today, I think you probably feel the same way I do of hearing a man trying to clear his innocence for 24 years, that is troubling. Yes, it's very sickening. And yes, we need to make certain and look back and make certain that his innocence is delivered. From the Greater Star Amen. County Urban League and the National Urban League, we're calling on the city to address the 21 pillar strategy that was developed by the community all across the nation. And 92 affiliates from the Greater Stark County Urban League or the National Urban League, the 92 affiliates have created a 21 pillar strategy for public safety. And we're calling on all, the whole United States to fulfill that mission in those pillars. <laughs> what happened to Frank should have never happened. As a social worker, as a state representative, as a city councilman, and as a black man, when we have a public safety come out, we need to check on people. When people say that they can't breathe, mm -hmm. when people say that they have a heart condition, when people say that they have issues going on, we need to believe them. Amen. We need to listen. We need to back off. We need to make certain that our public safety is trained, well trained. And when I was at the state, we were trying to push for implicit bias training, and that should be a mandate, not a suggestion. Implicit bias training, those officers went in there with bias. And yeah. oftentimes, on the southeast side of Canton, many people come to the southeast, and they have bias in their eyes and in their hearts. We need to make certain that these officers, again, are seeing people as humans, seeing people with humanity, Yes. And that they have dignity and respect for each person. Yeah. Frank just got in an accident. He just got in an accident. And there was no concern, none at all, for when he went into that place. He could have been very severely hurt, but they were trying to arrest him. I don't know about you, but I've seen that video. And I've seen that he did nothing wrong. He just shouted. He did nothing wrong. And we should have at least had the dignity and respect to be able to walk him out and look over his concern. We didn't know if there was drugs. We didn't know if there was alcohol. We didn't know if there was mental health. We didn't know none of that. Correct. We just arrested him. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you what. From the Greater Stark County Urban League and the NWCP, we are partnering and we're going to be strong on the people's rights right here in Canton, Ohio. Right. So thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. No peace. No peace. And finally, finally, and this is finally, uh, we have the pr we have president of the NAACP. So much talk and no action. 
right? Right, so much, so much talk, right, and no action. Amen. And what will you do? The same rally and cry needs to be the cry that they hear on the steps of Congress and on the steps of the Senate. The same place where laws are passed, you need to be having voices that can change the landscape of the nation. It's not just small little Canton. Here we go. Similar to the deaths of Eric Gardner, George Floyd, the police have ignored. They ignored his pleas. No more knees on our necks or our backs. No more use of excessive force. If we're going to address something, let's address it right. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure we're talking about apples to apples. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Every emotion, every tear needs to be formulated into something that's objective that you can use to move and change the landscape of a community. We're making a call also to Congress. It doesn't stop here in Little Old Star County. It is here that we get an opportunity. It is here that we get an opportunity to shape reform for the entire nation. It is here that seeds of greatness have been planted through the life of Frank Tyson. It is here that we will not allow the death to be a double tragedy, the loss of a loved one, and then the loss of doing nothing about it. I want to share with you just a couple of pieces here that I think are important. I want to let you know where the action begins, at least with NAACP. I want to read something to you that came hot off the press yesterday about 515. It came straight from our general counsel, by the way. Good stuff. And it came smoking hot. The copier couldn't handle it. <laughs> it was burning. All right. It said here, Dear Assistant Attorney General, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, calls on the U.S. Department of Justice to investigate the death of Frank Tyson, a 53-year-old African-American man who on April 18, 2024, Canton Police responds to a car accident at the scene, they're informed by a bystander that uh, he fled into a nearby bar, accompanied officers into the bar, identified Mr. Tyson as the driver. He refuses to leave. The police attempt to arrest him. Uh, he resists the arrest and states several times they are trying to kill me. In addition, he yells, call the sheriff. You heard it. It's all in the transcript. Mm -hmm. Eventually, they pin him down, face down, knee on his back, handcuffed. The other officers, they continue to work with Mr. Tyson. He yells again, I cannot breathe. Response, the officer says, stop fighting. Eventually gets off of him. Tell him he's fine and you shut the up. Right? Shook him, administered CPR. He remains unresponsive. Uh, they call the medics. It's 10 minutes later. According to the news, he's pronounced dead. 9 18 p.m. The NAACP, deeply troubled. Horrific tragedy. Despite 
Mr. Tyson repeatedly yelling, can't breathe. Officer with his knee on his back. The other officers, similar situation. Mm -hmm. Similar to the deaths, Eric Garner, George Floyd, police did this thing again, ignoring the pleas of a black man. Callous disregard, please underscores the need for an urgent investigation. The Justice Department, mm -hmm. our general counsel, mm -hmm. our state conference, mm -hmm. they're all here. Changes the landscape in terms of what we have at our disposal. It's great to have some good representatives here, but we've got some great oversight too. Okay. And then at the end of the day, you know who's sitting at the head of our table? It's God. Come on, mm -hmm. Amen. Leave room for him. That's right. Amen. Look to him for the direction. Amen. Don't move without him. Amen. He holds the whole world including you and I, in his hand. Justice for Frank Tyson. 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 Again, please stay with this family. It's going to be a long journey. Let's make this video go viral, y'all. To the activists, they can't get justice without you all. You all are the community. Y'all are going to give Frank a voice that they did not hear while they had a knee on his neck. Yeah. And with your help, yeah. just like we got justice for